cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I'm so much for me. I cannot tell it all. The way. One drop of his precious blood covers it all. And he takes our sins away when we ask him to when we repent of those things that we've done. Amen. I really don't know which way to go this morning. I'm just going to stand up here and be a willing vessel. Because apparently God's got something in store and the enemy wouldn't be fighting me so hard this morning. I got up and the last night I was trying to study and I just couldn't get nothing to get. Well, I got a few things and I thought, okay, this morning I get up and I'm not feeling too great today, but I'm going to give God my best. Uh, you know, if you, you have been fighting this allergy thing going on. and uh, But anyway, I'm not giving the devil credit. I know who my healer is and uh, I don't think I have anything contagious or I wouldn't be here, but I don't feel that great and my throat hurts and and everything but the thing of it is i'm god's child and i wasn't going to come this morning and i was laying in the bed and ain't god good yeah i tell you what I, we always have our tv on preaching and the, um the, the minister began to speak about hell and he began to talk about how bad hell was going to be and and how oh how it was going to be for eternity and and that we weren't going to come out of hell and we were going to go there and as i laid there in the bed and i was thinking about hell and i'm thinking lord i'm going to get up lord if you want me to go this morning you got to give me the strength to get out of this bed and to get in there and get ready well i mean i fought it i did but i got in there and i got ready i don't know about you but i don't want hell to be my home i don't want hell to be anything uh, that i don't want to even look i don't even want to go down into hell to see i don't want to see nothing about hell but you know there is a place called hell and if we don't get it right and if we don't get our sins under the blood we're going to hell honey i tell you everybody in this room may not make it to heaven somebody may go to hell i don't wish that or desire that on anybody but i tell you what one time i had a dream i'll never forget the dream and and, and i know it was a tormenting dream from the enemy and i had a dream and i dreamed i was in this line see 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 i dreamed i was in this line and and, and this line was going to a to, to somewhere. I don't really know where it was going other than in my dream I felt like it was going to heaven. The line was, you know, they were getting prepared. They were in line to go to heaven. Well, the next thing I know, a couple of uh, of these men come and get me and they're in these capes and it looks dark-sided and, and all I remember is them grabbing me out of the line and taking me out and I remember thinking, I didn't, I didn't make it. I didn't make it, but Derek made it. He was in the line. He was going on, but I, they pulled me out and, and I was so tormented over that dream for a long time because I thought that I was going to hell but it's my choice if I want to go to hell I've got a choice this morning either to make heaven my home or to make hell a place where I'm going to lay my head when I take my last breath but i am got to tell you this morning I don't want hell to be my home I want to go to heaven but then again on down the road God gave me another dream God gave me a dream I talked to God about that dream and I said God I just don't understand this dream I believe you give me dreams, but God, that was a tormenting dream. A dream that I wasn't going to be with you one day. A dream that I was going to go to hell and not make it. And I and, and as time went on down there, that was a while back and then next thing I know, I have another dream. I dream about the rapture. I dream I was in this room and, and it was full of people. It looked like just a regular room with a bunch of chairs and, and I could see two doors and, and, and it was on the back side of the building, the two doors was and they was coming in and they was getting people and taking them out the door well I'm sitting there and, and they come over to get me and I said me? I get to go? So as they began to lead me out the door and I got out there, I could see people. I mean, it was just like a painting. I painted one time. I'm not a painter. But I painted this painting of the of, of these uh, uh, spirits uh, going up into the air like it was a picture of the rapture. And, and exactly the way I painted that picture is exactly how I saw it. The, the people were going up in the air and, and I began to go walk and I began to go up in the air and oh, it was feeling so good and oh, I was going up and, and it was just, oh, it was my, I was so excited. Yeah, I was come going on. To heaven, and and next thing I know, I hear God say, "It's not time," and I started going back down, and I was like, "Oh no, I want to go. I don't want to stay here." But He was telling me it, it, it wasn't time. He wasn't done yet. There was some things that had to happen here. There were some things that had to take place. He wasn't 
done with me yet. But he let me know that I was going to make heaven my home. But it's going to be my choice if I want to make heaven my home. It's going to be my choice if I want to go by the word of God and walk in the spirit and not after my flesh. See, because if we walk after our flesh, it's going to cause us nothing but spiritual death. But if we begin to walk after the spirit, we're going to have a spiritual life. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say amen. Do you know what I'm talking about this morning? I'm talking about living for Jesus. I'm talking about making heaven your home this morning. I'm talking about getting on fire for God. I'm talking about letting everything else go. I'm talking about putting him first in your life. I'm talking about when the devil comes and you get down and out. You don't give up, but you get up. You get up and you get going for God because I'm telling you, he's going to come. I might be under attack this morning, but I praise God that I made it to his house one more time. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is so good to us, but how many times God has been so faithful to us, but are we faithful to God? Are we faithful to Him? He's the one that gives us breath, Sister Shirley. He's the one that gives us strength in our body. He's the one that we can go to when we're on our last limb, uh, when we're frustrated, aggravated, disgusted, busted, and just the plum tired of being tired. He's the one you can go to and get filled up again. You want to be on fire for God? Get filled up with the Word. Get filled up with His presence. Get filled up and alone. Get filled up in your alone yes. time with God. Hallelujah. God wants us to, to get on fire. We heard the Word. We've been praying God. Use the evangelist when He comes in the door. Use Him. He don't know nothing about none of us. Uh, Derek don't even talk to him much uh, and, and I know he told him nothing about nothing but you know God come in here and used a willing vessel to speak to new life heart to heart church uh, now that now this is what we're going to have to do we either going to have to get, get up and get going and I ain't talking about changing churches because it ain't going your way I'm talking about get up and get going for Jesus I'm talking about get up in the mornings and let him be all that's on your heart, all that's on your mind when you wake up and you begin to thank him that today's going to be a good day. You begin to thank him that, uh, that he's going to use you that very day for his glory. For his glory. Come on. <laughs> Bless her, Lord. God is good. But we got a choice. We got a word, didn't we? We got a word. Some of us even got a word that we ain't heard in a long time. But God has a way of reminding us, especially when we get down and out. And, and we just don't know. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been there. Maybe you're holier than I am. But I tell you, I have some bad spots sometimes in my life where I'm so down and out and <clears throat> in despair. And the only way I'm making it is through Jesus. When the enemy's telling you it's over, you ain't going to make it. And God's saying, yes, you are, my daughter. You get up and you get going. You see, we got to get up and we got to get going. We got the word now, right? We got the word now, Pastor. We got the word. We got to know him. Now we got to do something about it. What we going to do about it? Are we going to remain how we was in 2018? Or are we going to make 2019 a blast for Jesus? Are we going to get up and get going? And I'm talking about get up get going about the Father's business. Doing what God has called you to do. Doing what God has called me to do. And God has called us all for relationship with Him. And without relationship, we won't walk in the Spirit. We will walk in our flesh. Because see, the closer you get to the Son, to the Father, the harder you're going to get. The on fire you're going to get for Jesus. But, the, but if we like that relationship, I promise you that old man, he's going to rise up and that flesh is going to burn. But we don't need the flesh. We need to walk after the Spirit of God. You know, we were at the bookstore the other night. I thought, Lord, I just had a desire to go to the bookstore. Isn't it funny how God will take you somewhere and you don't even know why you're going? I love the bookstore. I could stay in there for hours, couldn't I, dear? I was already in there for hours. Didn't know why. Looking around, trying to find something. Bought me a brand new tambourine. Praise God. I love it. it shakes louder than the other one. <coughs> but I go in the bookstore and I'm in there looking around. 
Now I'm looking for some books on spiritual warfare. They don't really have any books there on spiritual warfare. It's sad. Because that's what we need. We need to know what we're fighting and what we're up against. We don't fight against flesh and blood. But we fight against spirits, principalities, wickedness in high places. We don't fight against each other. It's called spirits from hell. They get on folk and we fight that spirit. But when we recognize that we're not fighting a person, it's so much easier. So I'm in the bookstore and I asked the little girl, I said, do you, can you tell me, I think I, I can't remember the guy's name, I said, do you have a book on, on this spiritual warfare or something, I can't remember what it was, but she got to look and she even looked it up, bless her little heart, she couldn't find nothing. And uh, I'm standing there and this, this young guy, gentleman, came over, me and Missy was there together, and he said, did I hear you say spiritual warfare? I said, yeah, I'm looking for, well, who are you looking for? I said, oh, George Bloomer. Well, I don't know him, who is he? I said, all I know is he fight, he's got books on spiritual warfare, and, and there's some good books. George Bloomer writes some good books on spiritual warfare. So we're standing there, and he starts, he said, you know, <clears throat> he, he actually got me on this about walking after the Spirit. He said, you know, I'm, I'm a born again. He was giving me his testimony. He said, I'm, he said, I've got saved. He said, I was a drug addict. He said, I got saved, and I got delivered instantly. He said, now, don't get me wrong. I'm telling everybody where I go, and I'm doing this, I'm doing that. He said, but there's just a, but, but they tell you how to get saved, and, and, and they tell you this and that. He said, but really, I ain't heard no teaching on how to, how to fight mm -hmm. spiritual warfare. Right. I said, well, he said, how do you walk after the spirit? And not after your flesh. And he quoted the scripture. You know, he was real good. He had some knowledge there. I'm like, and I was like, well, I'm going to tell you something. Warfare starts in your mind. Mm -hmm. Your mind. You have a choice. To what and whom. The thoughts that you allow in your mind. You have a choice. If you're going to let the enemy. You know, it starts with a thought. And then it grows into something really big if you don't get rid of the thought. But the Bible says to cast down. See, I ain't prepared for all this. I'm just being man led by the Lord. Most I can teach on Santa Claus because that's why I got a lesson on Santa Claus for Christmas. But God ain't let me teach that Santa Claus lesson yet. Come on. I mean, and it's past Christmas. But I said, okay, I'll take what I got and we'll go with it. But I want to be led by God. If I'm not led by God, it won't help. But we've got to cast down. I began to tell him how and he knew some of the word or he probably knows more than I don't know what. I didn't know the guy. But I said, you got to cast down those thoughts. I said, it's kind of like this. When the enemy comes, and no wonder I'm under attack this morning because this is what I said. I said, when the enemy comes and he tries to bring sickness on you, you just got to begin to rebuke that devil, tell him you ain't accepting that sickness, that you are healed by the stripes Jesus bore on his back. And as he was standing there, he said, well, maybe I just got to need to write a book about spiritual warfare. He said, because I believe that when you get saved, they, we need to know what we're up against. He said, we, you know, I got thinking, you know what? That's true. When you get saved, that's when the war begins. That's begin when it's on. That's begin, I mean, I believe God, where I can go by my own experience when I got saved. Oh, my goodness, I remember it was just so glamorous and glorious, and I didn't have as many battles at first. But as time went on, it was bang, bang, bang. But you know what? I can say thank you, Lord, for those battles because those battles taught me something. Those battles brought growth in my life. Those battles made me seek God even harder. Those battles made me find the truth in whatever I was going through. That I could stand on God's word and know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yeah. That I can yeah. stand on the word of God Amen. and say, by his stripes I am healed. See, we've got to stand on the word of God because when you got the the word of God in you and you know the word of God you've got power in your life yeah. you've got power over your situation over your you've already been made victorious but the problem is is we don't walk like we've been made victorious we'll walk around like we're lost and undone without Jesus we'll walk around and act like the world when all we gotta do is walk and talk and pray and quote that word against the enemy and tell him Satan get behind me. It is written. That's all we, you know, God gave us his word because it's powerful. Yeah. He gave us the word. He gave us promises because
children. I thank God for his promises. But when you're going through a storm or you're going through a battle and you're going through a trial or you're going through sickness or, or you, whatever you may be going through, just know that you're going to go through things. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God said he shall deliver them out of them all. See, if you, the Bible says, uh, oh, our tongue, we got to watch what comes out of our mouth. If I walk around all day saying I'm going to die, guess what? I'm probably going to die. And I'm talking spiritually or it could be fleshly. But if I walk around saying uh, saying that I am healed by the stripes Jesus bore on his back, sooner or later, I'm going to begin to see those symptoms fall off. Uh, oh, they're just going to have to go back to the pit of hell because I'm not receiving one thing from the devil. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God said he shall deliver them out of them all. See, we got to know the word because the word is powerful than yeah. any two-edged sword. It will cut the head yeah. of the devil off. It will cut him down so bad that he'll run, and run off and go to attack somebody else. But then he'll come back. Yeah. We're going to have to go, to fight, go back to war again and fight. If we're in a fight. I don't know if y'all realize it or not. Yeah. We're in a war. Yeah. We're in a battle. This country's a mess. But guess what? God is the fixer of the country. God is the one. I'm telling you what. No, people may not lie. I'm not a politician. Never have been. Really never got into it. But Donald Trump, I tell you what. If he ain't in there by God, I don't know who he is. Because I'm going to tell you this. Uh, he's under more of attack than Obama ever was. Yeah. He's under an attack right now. Yeah. Because he's trying to stand for the rights of the country. But the rights of God's word also. He's trying to stand for the people. He's trying to stand. Yeah. See, and people say, well, he ain't saved. Let me tell you, God can use anybody. Yeah. It don't matter. He can use a lost duck if he wants to. He can use a donkey. Yeah. He can use anybody. But our job as Christians is to pray for the man that's over our country. Our job as Christians is to pray that the will of the Father be done in our country. That's our job. We've got to pray because we've got power over the enemy. And if we'll begin to pray, our prayers will go out to the fowls of the air and them demonic spirits, uh, them Jezebel spirits in the White House, them demonic spirits, uh, them div division spirits, all them devils up there. God will go up there and he'll just clean house. Will he not? But why do we have so little faith? Come on. We'll go around and we'll talk about how bad it is. And by no means it's bad. Why don't we go around and talk about how big God is? Amen. How big his he's a how he's a problem solver. And how uh, how it's gonna turn around. And how things may look dark and bleak right now. And we may be in a whatever they had going on right now. But God is a right now God on time. God every time. And God can go up there and just like that. And he can clean house. Hallelujah. God is still on the throne. Church, we can't forget who is on the throne. We can't forget who is the ruler over us. We can't forget who created this earth. His name is God. Bless the Lord. Because if we begin to speak those things, it's not though as they are. Uh -huh. The enemy's losing power over our circumstance. He's losing power over our government. He's losing power over our situation. Do you get what I'm saying this morning? I think God really wants us to get this. If, if you're going through something, don't speak negative over your situation. Don't speak, uh, don't speak like you've already lost uh, the battle because you're victorious. God made us victorious, church. We need to, we need to speak it like it's already happened. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I thank God this morning I might have been feeling bad, but I thank God He was in my bedroom with me and He was right there and I could see him working on my son. Woo! Praise God. And I know he's coming in. I know the devil's a liar. I know he's coming back to God. Oh, I'm telling you, if you've been in there this morning, that was worth. I think God blessed me because I got up and I got ready anyhow. I think he blessed me. He let me know it's going to be all right, my daughter. He's coming home. He's coming home. I'm working on it. And I got to minister 
right back in church. He said, yeah, but I never really was there. I said, son, you was there at one time. You just let everything else come in and cloud out what's best for you. I said, now you're going through this and I'm going to tell you, the devil's attacking you. I said, but God, you've watched God do so much, Colin. You've watched God. The mornings, I know this may sound weird to y'all, but Come I, on. I believe God can do anything. He says, pray about all things. But I've watched God on many a mornings get us to school on time. Because a traffic line, if you ever need a traffic line, would be, whoo. I watched God and pray the whole way. And God and calling over here hearing me. Then it got to work. Colin said, Mama, pray. Then Colin got a little Colin got in a little trouble. I had to go to court over school. He said, Mama, pray before we get out of the car. So he knows. He said, Mama, pray. And one time I went, we had to go back again for like a little, he wasn't in trouble that time. He said, Mama, watch this and get out. He said, Mama, ain't we going to pray? <laughs> And then he'd get out and I'd say, now, Colin, I hope you recognize what God just did in there for you. Oh, y'all just don't know. Colin had to do, I wouldn't want to ever say this, but I feel led to tell this. Colin had to do some community service work. Colin was struggling. Y'all know he was struggling in school. I told y'all, pray. Well, our prayers got answered, by the way. So Colin had to do some community work. Quite a bit. I don't remember how many hours. And he really didn't want to do that community work. Uh, just didn't. But you, you, you do the crime, you have to do the time, right? So we go back again, and of course they asked about his grades, and his grades was, whew, you're talking about prayer changing things. He was horrible. He had to make up three credits. We was in the last nine weeks of school. In fact, I think school was supposed to be out in two or three weeks. He was real close. And I've been praying, God, Lord, Lord, let him help him. Lord, I want to see him graduate. I know he needs that, edge, that diploma. And, and, and I had y'all praying. And so we go in the next time around, and of course they went over his grades, and they hadn't. He had brought one grade up a little bit, but not a whole lot. I'm talking about failing. Yep. He was failing. Literally, I thought we was going to be doing summer school. This is the truth. So we go in there, and of course, I thank God for favor. I don't pray to get him out of trouble. But you as yourself know as your child, you want to see him do good. And so... <laughs> We get in there, and the judge looks at him, and he said, I want to tell you what, son. He said, if you can bring all these grades up, get all this done, and show me that you're going to walk across that stage, he said, I'll let everything, oh, and by the way, he had a fine to pay, it was a ticket or something. He, he had a fine, it was all, because once you get in trouble, it's all there on the plate. And, uh, he said, I tell you what, if, you, if, you, if you'll show me that you're going to walk across that stage, he said, I'll let everything go. I'll just clear your plate, pretty much is what I'm saying. He said it different. And we left there that day, and I said, Colin, I hope you know that God's trying to help you. And I said, God just gave you favor in there. You may not recognize it. He said, I know, Mama. I know it was God. So we leave, and... He had two weeks, Eric. I think that's what it was. Two weeks to get three credits made up and plus some other grades. So, of course, I'm praying. So Colin goes in. Every afternoon he would, he would stay and try to get his work done. How do you know God, he will intervene? One of the coaches at school come to Colin. 
come to Colin. Colin would never go to nobody. He's just like that and ask. Except for his girlfriend. She wasn't going to do it for him. So Colin, the, the, the guy come to Colin and told him that he was willing to help him. So because of, I believe God sent that man to Colin. And Colin got all of those credits, three credits. You know how much work that is? Like nine tests on each. I might be even under exaggerating. <clears throat> but he ended up getting it all done. And we go back to court. We have to go back to court because the judge wanted to see him walking across that stage. Now, now you tell me God don't answer prayers. Now, it may not be the way that you think that it's going to be answered. That's right. But God's faithful. Yes, he is. So we go back. And the judge, I'm talking, if you could have seen the people's eyes. See, when I say three credits, y'all may not know what I'm talking about. But Jeremy Ezel knew what I was talking about. And we're sitting there and calling the the, the, the the Mr. I can't think of his name, told what it what, what all he got done and where he was at, and the judge was like, Wow. Jeremy and Zola to me and said, Wow. You know? I said, Thank you, Jesus. Because I know why Colin graduated. I know who sent him the help. And I know. It wasn't because of Colin, but it was because of God. Amen. So the judge looks at Colin and he says, I'm proud of you, son. I knew you could do it. He didn't beat him down. He just said, I'm proud of you, son. I knew you could do it. And he said, and I made a, a vow in you. He said, and I just want you to know that you're clear. Everything's clear. You don't have to do anything. When we left that building that day, I was crying inside for the joy of the Lord because I knew God had just intervened. Amen. See, prayer works. But not just prayer, but faith behind your prayers work. Amen. Believing that God is going to work out your situation. And to know that if we would run to God. We had a little discussion here Friday. I looked at some things trying to teach on that. I thought, well, maybe I need to teach on that. People need to know how to, you know, how to handle hurts. <clears throat> I didn't give me that. But you know, if we'll run to God, listen, Jesus walked this earth, and I can promise you that he was probably hurt somewhere down the line. I bet he cried a lot. And he cried out to God a lot. That's how he made it. Amen. Even his own disciples that had walked with him and knew him and was his friends. Went to sleep when he asked him to help me pray. Help me pray. Come on, we got to pray. But he comes back and finds him asleep. But we got to know that God is the one who makes the difference. See, I can run to Mama. Mama's going to hold me. And she's going to love me. And she's going to say it's going to be all right. That's what Mamas do, right? That's what yep. they do. But mama can't help me like Jesus can help me. Jesus can help me when I make my the choice and make up my mind that he's my only help and my only hope. I promise you, he'll help you. But see, we can't walk after the flesh. And maybe that needs to be taught in this church, Derek, how to walk after the Spirit. And I want to kind of touch that a little bit because walking after the Spirit means you're walking in the Word. Yeah. You're walking. You can't walk in the Spirit on your own, by the way. You've got to have the Spirit in you before you can ever walk in the right, Spirit. Amen. 
And you've got to know that it, it, the way to walk in the Spirit is to know the Word of God. And what does the Word say about it? Whatever God, the world says, if somebody hits you, hit them back. I mean, I used to do that. Cuss me, I'm going to get you, baby. But in, the, in God's world, they cuss you or they hit you. You turn the other cheek. You pray for those who despitefully use you. Yeah. You pray for those who, who come again. You pray for them. See, that's how you win in God's world. And that's how you grow. And that's walking in the Spirit. But see, if you <coughs> want to do it your way, then you're walking in the flesh. But it's a growing process in God to know that, that you know, but, but God will help you. He doesn't want us to remain. He does not want us to be like the world. The world has nothing for us to offer us but bad. But God offers us peace and joy and life and hope. He offers us all the good things from his kingdom. But the only way we're going to get those good things, because let me tell you, if you walk in your flesh, you're going to be miserable. You're going to be miserable. Maybe you got a problem with anger. If you got a problem with anger, I used to have a problem with anger. And I'll tell you what, God took the anger from me. I'm talking anger. I'm talking about hitting the walls. I'm talking about knocking out your husband. I'm talking about breaking the windshield, not thinking twice about it. I'm talking about angry. Getting so angry that it didn't matter who got in front of you that they didn't see nothing but black and you was going to knock it out. That's how angry I used to be. But when I got serious with God and said, God, I don't want to be like this anymore. Change me, God. Change me. Change me from who I am into who you are, God. He will deliver you of anger. He will deliver you. See, see, a lot of times our flesh, our flesh loves to be fed, by the way. We love to feed our flesh. But as a child of God, we've got to hate to feed our flesh. You know, I've heard this before. A lady asked me one time about something. I said, well, you just got to cut it off. Well, I just can't be mean to them. I didn't tell you to be mean to them. I just said you just got to turn it and cut it off. And when you cut it off, they'll quit calling you and they'll quit talking about it. I said, because the only reason they're calling you to talk about it is to feed your flesh and you're enjoying it and you're, and you're both sinning. I said, but when you cut it off, I said, either they'll call you back and they'll tell you they're sorry that they've been gossiping about the church body or whoever it was they're gossiping about and they'll, and they'll ask you to forgive them or they won't call you no more. Right. Right? I said, but I tell you what, you said you, you don't want to hurt their feelings. I said, I'd be more worried about God's feelings than I was their feelings. There you go. Because all they're doing is taking you down with them. You're in a pit and they're pulling you on in there with them. See, we got to stand up for what's right. When nobody else understands and they may get mad at you for a moment or a season, but it'll be all right. Because when you stand for God, He's going to fight for you and He's going to fight your battle and He's going to turn everything around. But listen, it ain't going to be easy. Nobody, if a preacher ever tells you when you get saved, it's going to be easy from now on, honey. You've got it made. You're going to heaven, honey. That man is lying to you because your battle has just begun. Your battle of change has just begun. Amen. See, church is a good place to come to get fed. But also, we don't need to just just feed ourselves in church. We need to feed ourselves outside the doors as well as at home, in the car, Walmart, or wherever else we are. But we need to feed ourselves the Word of God and not our flesh. Come on. Because see, God wants us to be like Him, right? He wants our character to be like Him. And if the devil tells you, well, I can't change. I've been like this all my way. He's a liar. He wants you to believe that lie so you won't change. He's told me before, oh, you ain't meant to be happy. My goodness. Come on. He'll lie. He'll tell you these things. So you can't get free. See, strongholds are real. And they come to keep you from growing. So if we'll just... I wish I was dead. could tell y'all more about the walking in the spirit realm. But all I can tell you is by experience on my behalf is that there's been times in my own life that I would have loved to knock somebody upside the head. Literally. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I would literally just want to choke them and say, do you not understand? But I can't do that. Y'all know the story. 
I pull up. I'm going to get out and go whip. I'm going to think I'm going to whip somebody. You know, just mad because I could see what the devil was doing. I could spiritually see it. But my flesh was wanting to take over and go take control of what was going on. But then I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, do you want me to do this or are you going to do it? And then I broke like a baby and bawled and repented of it and asked God to forgive me for what I was about to do and not trust Him. Because see, that's exactly what I was doing. I wasn't trusting God with a situation that I could see the enemy. See, I could see the devil working. I could see what he was doing. I could see it clear as day in a spiritual realm. I could see exactly what he was up to. But I thought, well, I'll just go take care of it myself. But then when I heard God, God let me know that I didn't need to be taken care of it, that I needed to trust Him. And when I trust, when I be, when I repented and I asked Him to forgive me, I tell you what, it wasn't a week's time. If it was a week, that God turned the whole thing around. The devil got exposed, and God had His way. But that's the only way God's going to get His way is when we get out of the way and we get ourselves out of the way of God and let God be God. But I'm telling you, it's going to take a relationship with God to get out of the way. We've got to have God to help us. And no matter how many times you've tried. Listen, I told somebody one time, I said, you may have, you may have uh, uh, went to, uh, to try to get help to get off drugs once. I said, but don't give up. Get up. Keep doing it. Keep, keep, get, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Don't give up because, see, God's there. And he's not saying, uh, well, you failed. I just don't want to. He'll say, I'm here. I'm here. He wants to embrace us. He loves us so much that he, make, he allows us to go through things to see where we're at with him. He allowed me through the revival to see some things where I'm at. Come on. I already really knew it. But God just brought on reinforcement to make sure I heard him loud and clear. See, that's the kind of God we serve. We serve a God that wants us to put our faith and trust in Him and know we cannot change ourselves. We have to pray, seek God, have a relationship with God, and I promise you, He'll change you. He'll change you, and people around you will know you've been changed, and the only way they're going to know you've been changed is because you have spent time with the Master. You have spent that time alone with Him, because my thing is, is who you hang out with is who you become. A lady here at New Year's said, I ain't got no friends. Oh, well, I don't either. My church family. Sometimes God don't want you to have friends, close friends. He wants you to be his friend, close friend. That's why I call him my best friend. Because a best friend is one you tell everything to. You know that when you go to your best friend, and if they're truly a best friend, you can tell them all about your day, even your bad things that happened or where you slipped and messed up. And they're going to hear you, but they're not going to tell nobody. And they're going to pray for you because they got their your heart at their best interest. That's Jesus. You may not can tell anybody else what you're fighting. But you can tell Jesus. He's the one we need to take it to anyway. That's right. Because he's the one that's going to make a difference. Do you understand what I'm saying? God wants us to <clears throat> get up and get going. Get prepared. Trust him. And to know that he loves each and every He loves us. Can you imagine loving your children the way you love them? I mean, you wouldn't want nothing to happen to your children. or I mean, you just... That's right. You want all good for your children. And you want your children to be loved by everybody. And you, you just want... You love your children, right? Well, imagine that. God loves us so much more. And we love our own children. A love that some of us haven't even tapped into yet. Come on now. A 
the love that will change you forever. When I met Derek, I was glad I met someone. Come and on. I knew he loved me. And not saying this for pity or nothing like that, but the things I had been through, it was almost like unreal to meet someone like Derek. Come on. He was just like, is this real? I was even scared. Because I didn't know him. He was too nice and too kind and too sweet and run to your ever beck and call and seemed like I couldn't get rid of him and I mean I tried everything <laughs> but he loved me Amen. but the only way he loved me the way he loved me was because of who's in him that's why he loved me Amen. it was all because of Jesus because Jesus makes the difference. You will, you will find it strange when you tap into a Godly love, the kind of love that only God can give you. When you can love someone that don't love you, when you know they don't like you, and you can love them anyway, that's a Godly love, and that kind of love only comes from Him. And that kind of love is what we need. We need the agape love to love those. What reward is it? And I said this Friday. What reward is it in loving those who love us back? That's right. So I, when I get around people that I don't, I, I don't know anybody that don't love me, but I'm sure there's somebody that don't, you know, I mean, there's somebody somewhere. But if you ever get around somebody that don't love you, look at it in a different way. Look at it like, whew, I'm getting a, a reward for this because I'm going to love them back anyway. And most of the time when the enemy's fighting you with somebody, I found this with experience. If the enemy begins to fight, enemy begins to fight you with somebody and he's trying to cause something there, something's going to happen good. There's something good going to happen. And the enemy knows it, so he's got to get some division and, and, and stir up strife and envy and all that right there so that whatever God's trying to use you to make happen, that he cuts it off. But if we'll recognize the enemy and we'll walk out in the spirit and not after our flesh, then God can work things that we would have never thought he could have worked out and do what we would have thought that we could have never done, but he can do. But God's good. I don't know about y'all, but I want to get closer to God. You know, sometimes you feel like you get in a rut. You get frustrated. Boy, was that for me. Frustrated. When I was fighting my way out of it, Sister Hope. I wasn't going to stay there. I got my vision back, and ever since I said about the vision, I'll tell you what, it's been one thing after another after another to come up against me. Come on. But I know that I know what God showed me. And I know that it, things ain't easy. Things ain't going to be easy. But we got one that'll fight our battles and fight for us and help us through it. If we allow him to. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning.